here are the notes for sections 9, 6, and 9, 7 of um, Algebra 1. Uh, please refer to um, the notes for section 9.5 uh, for the uh, for how to um, set up and use um, the factoring method we're going to use called the box and diamond factoring method. <clears throat> In 9, 6, and 7, we're going to use um, that same uh, that same method to help us factor more complex trinomials, um, specifically trinomials where the leading coefficient is not one. In the previous section, every leading coefficient, i.e., the coefficient in front of the uh, to lead off this polynomial here, um, was one, which made life kind of sim relatively simple, and we actually found some shortcuts going with it. Um, when the leading coefficient is not one, then we have a situation where this box and diamond method that we uh, began in, in the previous section is incredibly useful. Um, so, again, I've uh, I have a, a trinomial here. Um, in my method, it says I need to start by I'm finding seeing if there's a greatest common factor. In this case, there's nothing in common amongst all three. So then, I create myself a little diamond. Um, I get the multiply box by multiplying the first term and the last term. So 2x squared times 6 is 12x squared. I get the adding box by the um, by the linear term. And I solve this diamond problem. In numbers that multiply to 12x squared and add up to negative 13x are negative 12x and negative 1x. And then I create myself a 2 by 2 box. In my box go the first term of the trinomial, the last term of the trinomial, and then these two boxes are the answers to my diamond problem. <clears throat> I find what's in common in the top row, so I have 2x squared and negative 1x. x is in common of my column. Um, in this column, the biggest thing in common between negative 12x and 6 is 6. In this row, 2x squared and negative 12x, I get a 2 and an x. And here, there's between negative 1x and 6, there's nothing really other than 1. I double check my outside answers, make sure they actually multiply to the inside. I know it's a problem um, that 2x times 6 is not negative 12x. I remedy that by making the 6 negative. I run to the same problem over here, so I make that a 1 negative, because 1 times x is not negative 1x. Then I double check to make sure that I didn't screw things up too badly. Negative 1 times negative 6 is positive 6. So the factors of the two binomials that multiplied to make this as an answer, 2x minus 1 and x minus 6. Okay, in my second example, um, I check to see if there's something in common, and in this case, there is. There is something in common amongst 6a to the squared, 16a and 8, namely 2. So I factor 2 out. I figure out what times 2 gives this as an answer, which is 3a squared plus 8a plus 4. Uh, I'm left with a trinomial that I'm going to attempt to factor now. Again, it's a trinomial, so I'll try the box and diamond. My diamond, I get my multiplying first and last, 12a squared. Middle goes in the bottom. Answers, solutions to this should be what? 6a and 2a. a squared four answers answers find what's in common in my first column here there's an a in common my second common biggest number that goes into both six and four is two 
I'm in here three and an A. I'm in here two. Um, these should be positive. And I double check my work, and sure enough, each outside thing multiplies down and across to get the box. Therefore, my answer here, 3a squared plus 8a plus 4 factors to 3a plus 2 times a plus 2. And don't forget the 2 that it already factored out. Okay, so this was an example where there's a GCF in common. Or to be factored out. <clears throat> In my third example, <clears throat> notice that I'm seeing something that I haven't seen yet, namely a leading coefficient that is negative. Negative leading coefficient. My strategy for, figure, for figuring this out um, and for factoring this is I want to treat, if I have a negative leading coefficient, the first term is negative, I want to treat that as though the GCF is negative 1. So what I mean by that is I'm going to say negative 1 is a common amongst all three. So that means I'm going to put a negative 1 in front. And what times negative 1 gives each of these three things as an answer? Well, negative 1 times positive 5m squared is negative 5m squared. Negative 1 times negative 6m is positive 6m. And negative 1 times positive 1 gives an answer of negative 1. It's the same thing as writing a negative 1 in front and flipping the three signs that are in the inside. It's essentially what we're doing. Regardless, now that my leading coefficient is positive, now I can try my now I can attempt my box and diamond. Again, I'll try box and diamond because it's a trinomial. So 5m squared plus 1 is 5m squared. Middle term goes down below. I believe the answers are negative 5m and negative 1m. Five M squared, positive one, minus five M, minus one M. What's in common? My first column here is an M. My second column, nothing other than one. First row, five and an M. Second row, nothing other than one. I double check my work and lo and behold, I need to make that guy negative and that negative so that five M times negative one is negative five M. Negative 1m times m is negative 1m. Negative 1 times negative 1 is positive 1. Therefore, this guy factors to m minus 1, 5m minus 1, and don't forget the negative 1 that was in front. These are three examples of the most complicated things I can throw at an algebra 1 student to factor a trinomial. Either there's a leading coefficient, not one. There's a leading, maybe there's a GCF in common in addition to it. So I had to factor the GCF out first and then you find my box and diamond. Or maybe the leading coefficient was negative. So then I factor out a negative one and then box and diamond what's left over. It boils down to we're still using the same method we did before, box and diamond. Just now the first number happens to be different. So we follow our rules and get to an answer. For the rest of the front side, I'm going to quickly come up with an answer so you can see. Um, I'll quickly uh, factor this without much explanation so you can work on these on your own and check your work.
Are the three answers to the remaining problems. <clears throat> On the reverse side, we have problems um, where we can actually find, use some special patterns to help us factor quicker. Note that the first six here are binomials. <clears throat> We, had, we saw some special binomials that could get um, us, the, um, <clears throat> excuse me. Uh, we saw back in section 9.3 um, a special multiplication pattern that yielded a binomial. So what I mean by that is we saw way back when that if I had two things, binomials were of this form something plus something else, and that same something minus that same something else, that these quickly multiplied to the square of the first thing minus the square of the second thing. <clears throat> so in 9.3, we kind of went in this direction. We took two binomials that had the same thing in front, the same thing in back, one is plus, one is minus, and multiplied them quickly to be the square of the first minus the square of the second. Today, we're, uh, for these, we can actually go backwards. So if we start with a perfect square, subtract it from another perfect square, we can work backwards and quickly, um, and quickly factor these into the square root of the first, the square root of the second, one's positive, one's negative. So for example, what times itself is y squared? Maybe y. What times itself is 9? 3. Because of our special pattern here, since 9 is y squared is perfect square, 9 is a perfect square, this should factor very quickly into the following form. y goes first, 3 goes second, 1's plus, 1's minus. How do I know to use this? Um, perfect squares should jump out at me. I see red flashing lights in my brain when I see perfect squares that says something's probably going on here. Okay. How about the second one? Um, I first noticed actually that there's something in common amongst these, namely 16. What's left over? Um, 4c squared minus 1. I say, oh, can I factor this? Absolutely I can. This is a perfect square. This is a perfect square. What times itself is 4c squared? 2c. Times itself is 1? One, 1. Therefore, this should factor to 2c, 1, 1's plus, 1's minus. Same game. 81 jumps off the page at me as a perfect square. What times itself is 81y squared? 9y. What times itself is x squared? x. x is in front. 9y is in back. 1's plus, 1's minus. Same game. Note, it doesn't matter which one, which order I put these two binomials, as long as one's plus and one's minus, um, the pattern holds. Okay, oh, an example where there's 
um, where there's something in common. Amongst 12 and 48, 12 goes into each. It's left over, 1 minus 4m squared. Note that 1 times 1 is 1, 2m times 2m is 4m squared. Therefore, this factor is using that pattern. <clears throat> 4y squared minus 6 short, 4 is in common. You get a y squared minus 16. If you didn't remember this pattern, you could use the box and diamond method. What we'll say, though, is that the middle term is zero. So if I wanted to factor y squared minus 16 with box and diamond, I could still multiply first and last. I get minus 16y squared. Since it's a binomial, I'll say the middle term is zero. So what numbers multiply to negative 16 but add up to zero? That would be 4y and minus 4y. So my box would be like y squared minus 16, 4y minus 4y. Y is in common, 4 is in common, Y is in common, minus 4 is in common. Well, what do you know? This thing is the same as Y minus 4, Y plus 4. It's exactly what the pattern would tell us. So, moral of the story is you can use box of diamond if you want, or if you forget it, or if you uh, forget the pattern, then you can use box of diamond. Lastly, there's another, we had a second pattern in back in section 9.3 that was for what's called perfect square trinomials. Okay, this was kind of where we ended um, our study of um, section 9.3 of, of the special patterns. I'm going to write down here in the margin. Here, our other special pattern said that uh, we could multiply this thing very quickly, something plus something else squared. The pattern for this we saw was take the first thing and square it, take the last thing and square add it to the last thing that's squared, and then in the middle we multiplied the two things together and doubled it. For more information on this you can check out section 9.3, the notes from that section. Again, we, back in that section, we started with this thing and multiplied it out here. Well, we're going to work backwards. If we happen to notice something that's set up like this, say, bookended by two perfect squares, and the middle is just double of their square roots multiplied together, then we can factor this thing very quickly and very neatly into this nice squared binomial. So I look at my first example and I see, oh, I see this is certainly a perfect square s times s is f squared. 9 jumps off the page of me as a perfect square. 3 times 3 is 9. And I check, is 3 times s, then times 2, the middle term. Well, 3 times s is 3s, times 2 is, in fact, 6s. Therefore, according to our pattern, this trinomial factors very quickly to s, 3, the middle term, tells us what goes in the middle, s plus 3 squared. Perfect square, perfect square, x times 5 is 5x, times 2, 10x, it's 2, 10x. Therefore, this factor is very quickly to something, a binomial squared, namely x and 5, with a plus inside. Even if the leading coefficient is not 1, 
but it's still a perfect square, this pattern might hold. What times itself is 4n squared is 2n. Nope, that's a perfect square. 5 times 5 is 25. 2 times 5 is 10. And then double is 20n. Since this fits my little mold, this should factor quickly to 2n plus 5 squared. And for completeness, perfect square, perfect square, 3z times 4 is 12z, 12z times 2 is the middle. So this fits our pattern. And middle term was plus, so ours is plus.